and what's up gang welcome back to the channel thank you once again for joining me today i am nick nightmare and this is the sledgehammer wrestling show right here on sledgehammer tv only available on youtube.com before we get into the news today we just want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with everybody over in the uk all of our friends over there as i've said before on the channel we have a nice little fan base that lives over on that side of the pond and our thoughts and prayers are with you guys following that senseless attack on the Ariana Grande concert. What a stupid and senseless tragedy this is and to target such an event that has no political anything about it one way or another is just a bunch of kids getting together, having a good time, listening to music. And, uh, unfortunately, a sad loss of life and a terrible thing that has happened over in the UK. And, um, I would be remiss to not mention that, being that it has just happened a little while ago. And, um, I just wanted to put that out there. Now, what we are all always here for is the wrestling news. And... Let's pick up the pace a little bit and let's get some fun back into the show because it's ladies night and the feeling's right. Yes, it's ladies night. Oh, what a, oh, what a night. Yeah, that's right. That just happened. And you just seen it happen because it is ladies night here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. That was the plan for tonight. And we are going to go on as planned as we have gotten some pretty great news, all of which has to center around the women in the world of professional wrestling and I want to get started on that right away we got some great topics and some good stuff to go over and let's get into that right here and right now on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show and thank you for joining me let's do this this summer's WWE Women's Tournament finally has its name Triple H has announced today that the tournament will be called the May Young Classic the name honors Mae Young, who the company has long held up as a legendary figure in women's wrestling. She was 90 years old when she passed away in January 2014. After being in the planning stages for a short while, the tournament was announced at the WWE's Business Partner Summit in Orlando over WrestleMania weekend, which we have all heard. WWE hyped that it will feature a 32 competitor field and that 17 different countries will be represented. The May Young Classic will begin taping on July 13th and 14th at Full Sail University with tickets going on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. It is being taped to air on the WWE Network, of course. Good old JR, Jim Ross, confirmed that he'll be a part of the announced team for the tournament but no wrestlers have officially been revealed at this time. Dave Meltzer also has reported that those would be the taping dates for the tournament and that the plan is for the winner to later be crowned at a live special. This is great. This is great. I'm, I'm not going to say anything bad about them naming this tournament after Mae Young. Mae Young is a trailblazer in the industry. Mae Young is mostly known, nowadays anyway, for being put through a table by Bubba Ray Dudley on Monday Night Raw, as you can see on the WWE Network right now, and she will live in infamy for that moment now and forever. Whereas somebody like the fabulous Mola, who in my opinion this tournament really should have been named for, Let's be honest. The fabulous Moolah. 30 plus years as the woman's champion. Part of the WWE since Vince's daddy owned it and probably right at the beginning. She was probably the most famous woman's wrestler of all time. Up until the recent generation where we've had the Trish Stratuses and the Litas and the Chinas all come up out of nowhere, you know, Sonny, Sable, you know, before these were household names, there was only one woman in the world of pro wrestling that anybody was worried about, and her name was the Fabulous Moolah. 
We've seen her at the first WrestleMania, the second WrestleMania. She's the one this should actually be named for. I kind of think, and I'm, I'm being a little funny here, I think that maybe they didn't want to go with the fabulous thing because Carmella is fabulous now, and they didn't want to screw people up with the fabulous being all over the place. And the word moolah doesn't really lend itself to being attractive. You know, it means what it means, but it's moolah. You're going to call it the Moolah Classic? I mean, it doesn't really roll off your tongue, although I kind of like it a little bit better. Even if you took the Fabulous out and just called it the Moolah Classic. Hey, how about the Moolah and May Classic? Should have put them together, because that's what most of today's generation knows of them anyway. And they are equally important in their own way. As I said, Fabulous Moolah, 30 plus years on top of the business. Mae Young, known really for an insane bump versus the Dudley Boys during the Attitude Era. Trailblazing women. And the lady was in her late 70s, if not early 80s, going through tables. I would be proud to walk around telling the world that Mae Young was my grandma. I, there is no, nothing wrong with it being the Mae Young classic. I just... I just expected there to be some sort of like a pecking order. Mae Young, to me, is not on the same level as a person as Dusty Rhodes, who has the Dusty Rhodes classic. You know, and that makes sense, because it's Dusty Rhodes. He was influential. He helped create NXT. He helped create the people in the industry before there even was an NXT. He was coaching kids and trying to help guys get over. It's well known. We don't have to talk about it right now, because tonight's about the ladies. And Mae Young... Gets her just due, having this tournament named in her honor. We still don't know what the winner's going to get. And I'm hoping that it's not a big golden hand. Because that would be, while it would be hysterical, that would just be a joke. I don't even want to see, like, the insignia of a hand on the belt or the the trophy. Where I mean, I, I think, I guess it would be appropriate, since that's the only other thing she's kind of known for, is giving birth to Mark Henry's hand, son. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Let's go on with the tournament aspect of this whole thing. We don't know what the winner's going to get. It's not going to be a replica golden hand. It's not going to be a May Young statue in gold. And I hope that we get to see that because they did that for the Dusty Classic. If they do this for this one, I'd love to see what era Mae Young they are going to have immortalized in gold. Are they going to have the 80-year-old Mae Young that we got showing her puppies like that figurine? Or are we going to get Mae in her prime the way we should? Because that's what I hope they would do. Even though everybody knows what she looks like more now than then, as I've said a couple of times already. But... The implications of this tournament far surpass who it's being named over. It, it's going to be an unbelievable thing. I cannot wait for further details to be announced for this. And you know what? Since it's the Mae Young thing, instead of JR, or you know what? With JR, they should have Renee Young. Let's have Renee Young with JR calling it. And how about we add Darren Young to the commentary? And why don't we also have Eric Young be the special guest referee for every match? And everything will just be young. We'll have the song, the theme song, be Forever Young by Rod Stewart. Forever Young. And we have pictures of May. And, and it'll be beautiful. That's what they should do. <laughs> anyway... I'm very greatly looking forward to this tournament. It's going to be fantastic. The summer cannot come quick enough. Last summer we had the Cruiserweight Classic. Then we had the Tag Team Classic. Then we had the UK Championship Special and the UK Championship Tournament, which was absolutely fantastic. I cannot see what the girls bring to the table at this tournament. We are going to get to see talent from all over the world that your eyes have never seen before. We don't know what kind of styles, what kind of moves some of these girls are going to come out with. I cannot wait. And I have a feeling it's going to be as intimate and as investing to you as like an NXT is because it's going to be at full sail. You're going to have a hot crowd every night. They're going to do the vignettes and... and 
make us learn about these girls and, and allow us to get to know them through these things. And it's going to be fantastic. Make sure you have the WWE Network by the summer so that you don't miss out. Because we're definitely going to be talking about it right here on Sledgehammer TV. Next, big, big news for SmackDown's ladies. WWE officials are planning to announce a woman's Money in the Bank match for next month's event. And if all goes accordingly, we'll be getting the first of its kind, which means it'll be a recurring thing on SmackDown or just in the WWE in general. The SmackDown fam brand pay-per-view will not only feature the men's Money in the Bank, but as it currently stands, they are planning to announce a woman's match as well in the next few weeks and is more than likely going to feature the inaugural Women's Money in the Bank Ladder Match Championship Briefcase. There is no official word yet on participants nor is there any added stipulations as of yet but the fact that they are having this match alone is just another large step forward in women's equality in the WWE. Just this past October, the WWE stepped up and featured not only the first woman's Hell in a Cell, but also the first ever woman's pay-per-view main event. And just this past WrestleMania, hashtag give SD women a chance ended up getting the uh, SmackDown women's match moved from the pre-show to the main card. I am absolutely ecstatic that they are finally doing this and letting the women showcase themselves in the same manner that the men can. There is absolutely no reason why this match should not have happened already, especially as soon as they brought up the next crop as last year. Like, they should have done it right away and just did everything right with a bang. Look, these are the best of the best. Let's put them out there and see who gets a shot at Charlotte at WrestleMania. Money in the Bank should have determined that. You know, something like that should have went on. But I'm not going to complain because it's here and it's now. And it's going on the blue brand. And if they follow the same model as the men who they did announce tonight on SmackDown, there will be five participants. Because there's only five girls left besides the champion. And I'm pretty sure Naomi cannot be in the match for her own championship. So... Who does that leave us with? That leaves us with Charlotte, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Tamina, and Natalia. Who's the obvious favorite? The Queen, Charlotte. It's obvious how high the WWE is on this girl. Rightfully so. She's absolutely talented. She needs to work on her mic skills. I feel like she's getting a little bit better on SmackDown. Maybe she's not as nervous. Maybe something about being on Raw. Just brought the nerves out. I feel like maybe she's a little bit more relaxed. And she's going to get there. But maybe Becky. You know, it's going to be probably either one of those two. Becky Lynch is the first ever SmackDown Women's Champion. Why not make her be the first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match winner as well? Let her get some pats on the back. Charlotte's going to be the queen now and forever. She don't need those type of accolades. However, she probably will want to continue to win as much as she can on pay-per-view to solidify the fact that she is the queen. If they wanted to screw everybody over, they'd give it to Carmella and have Els Worthless run in there and help her win this title, this uh, briefcase rather, somehow. But if it was me, I'd give it to Tamina. Imagine just Tamina pulling down that briefcase, right? And now you're the woman's champion, right? And you know the rules of the briefcase, right? Right. So, every step you take, every move you make, you know Tamina's going to be watching you. I don't mean to be doing all this musical referencing tonight, but it's just coming out. There's music in my blood. It happens sometimes. Get over it. So, imagine that. You're the champion, right? You got a deal. Let's say it's Naomi, right? Naomi's the champion right now. So, Tamina wins the money in the bank. And she's got to face Becky Lynch. She's got to deal with Charlotte. She's got matches against Natalia. Maybe Lana gets bumped up. 
Maybe they even bring in a few surprise legend girls. Maybe they bring in somebody like uh, like a Victoria to help these girls get through what could be a very difficult match. And Victoria has some hardcore experience and may be able to do that. But, you know, that might be the case. But imagine all this stuff's going on and all the while in the back of Naomi's mind, she's got to worry about this, this beast woman. This purebred, maniacal... Amazonian beautiful woman who has a pedigree in pro wrestling, a lineage in pro wrestling, was born to do this. And now she's got a briefcase that says she could come and take you on at any time. Every single match you have is now a dramatic situation because whether you win or lose, even if you were put just put through the grueling, most grueling match of your life and you got your hand raised in victory... Any minute they can hit the freaking music and tell me no, tell me no, can come out and just imagine it, man. That just the looming, impending doom of Tamina eventually going to cash in that briefcase would bring so much drama to every moment. You could have her tease it, have her sitting in the crowd just holding it, just watching the champion from afar all the time like a stalker, just with the briefcase, just to keep in her head that I'm coming. You're not going to know when. And somebody, the intimidating stature and size and strength of Tamina, it would be magic. But that's how I would do it. That's not how they're going to do it, like I said. You go their way, I'm pretty sure Carmella's going to come out of this thing with the help of the chinless wonder himself, Mr. No Chin James Ellsworth, will probably help her win this, and we're going to have to deal with that. And we'll hopefully, she'll do as good as the WWE thinks she's going to do. But that's what I say. I say give it to Tamina. I want to know what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comments below and let me know who you think's going to win this thing. Once we find out who's even in this thing, you can start out with that. Let me know who you would put in if you'd bring anybody in from the outside. If you would maybe even allow some of the girls from the Raw brand just to spice things up a little bit. But it's a SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view, you'll say, right? Well, they just had a Raw exclusive pay-per-view with two SmackDown matches on it. So I think they can get away with it there. The WWE, they make their own rules and they change them on the fly all the time. They could definitely change it in this case. I think it would make it more interesting. It would make booking a winner a lot harder. But, um, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I would do. That's what I would do. I would put the Raw and SmackDown teams together because you have, either way, you have somebody, you have Bailey or somebody on Raw win the Money in the Bank and do that. But the Money in the Bank case is blue. They're not going to do that. That's what I would like to do. It would make it more interesting, but it's definitely not going to happen. But let me know what you think. Don't forget to sound off in the comments below. And while you're over there, Hit that thumbs up for me if you like what's going on in this show. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you are, I want to thank you guys once again for being part of the Sledgehammer TV family and the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show Army because we are taking over and we are coming in force. We got HOG Wrestling coming up this weekend. I'm going to get a chance to meet the American Nightmare to Cody Rhodes. I almost just called him Toady and that's okay because I mess up sometimes on this show because I'm a fucking human being so get over that too. But we're going to meet Cody Rhodes and we're also going to meet the five time, five time, five time, five time, five time WCW champion World Heavyweight Champion, he'd get mad if you heard me say that, Booker T, sucker, and it's all going down at the NYC Arena this Saturday night. I'm going to be there, I'm going to bring you guys as much footage as I possibly can. But that's going to lead us into today in Pro Wrestling History, Women's Edition. Pulled up quite a few interesting little tidbits from today, nothing that big, I will really say, but let's go over our little facts that we have here right now. Seven years ago today, the WWE presented Over the Limit from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan. That night, Eve Torres defeated Maurice to retain the WWE Divas Championship. Oh, that must have been a classic. Four years ago today, on Impact Wrestling from Tampa, Florida... 
Mickey James defeated Velvet Sky to win the TNA Knockouts Championship. I'm sure that was insanely better than what had gone on between Eve Torres and, and Maurice. Because Velvet Sky's got chops. Mickey James is a proven talent. I'm almost positive I watched that match. I couldn't remember it if I tried. I've seen so many since then, and it's just all a blur to me. But anyway, Mickey James, now WWE talent. Velvet Sky, now dating Bubba Ray Dudley. Mm-hmm. Had one hell of a match that night, I'm sure, four years ago today. Also today, in some interesting history, I pulled this one up. All of these are courtesy of Cage Side Seats, by the way. Today, which is May the 23rd, 2017, would have been the 75th birthday of Mary Alfonsi, best known to wrestling fans as Donna Christianello. Not many of you are probably going to know this, but check this out. Interesting historical fact, and it ties in with the rest of the history-making women's news of this episode. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Christianella was employed as a waitress when, after some contacts, she connected with the fabulous Mula. She and her friend moved to South Carolina in 1963 to train with Mula. While her friend lasted just one match, Donna would last nearly 30 years in the business. Donna won the NWA Women's World Tag Team Championship in 1970. I wasn't even born yet and would hold them for the most part of the next three years with her tag team partner, Tony Rose. This was in the NWA and the AWA, and they would eventually land in the WWF as the first ever, and probably only, women's tag team champions. Christianella would have a run in the WWF, highlighted by competing in the first ever all-ladies Survivor Series match in 1987, which I absolutely remember where she would team with one of her protégés, the sensational Sherry Martell. Wow, she taught the sensational Sherry. Look at that. That's even more. See, I didn't really read this before I picked this one, but uh, that made it even better. Christianella would live with the fabulous Moolah on and off for the next 35 years before moving back home to Pittsburgh. On August 25th, 2011, Mary died of chronic obtrusive pulmonary disease, that's COPD, which I lost my own mother to. In her hometown of Pittsburgh, she was 69 years old. So, look at that. Donna Christianello was in the first ever Survivor Series all-women's match and was the first ever WWF World Women's Tag Team Championship. An historic person. Somebody noteworthy of being remembered, especially on a special episode like this. And why are we even doing this? Well, not because it's trendy and because it's Women's Month or it's Breast Cancer Month, because the news called for it. The women are making news, so we're doing a woman's episode. Give me that thumbs up. Give me two, if you can. Just like that. Give me two. Finally, 18 years ago today, the WWF presented Over the Edge from the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. This card would have a mixed tag match featuring Nicole Bass and Val Venus defeating Deborah and Double J Jeff Jarrett. Now, the only reason this match is relevant at all is because this date in pro wrestling history is most remembered for the shocking and tragic passing of Owen Hart at this very event that this ridiculous tag team match took place and it's probably a reason why I don't remember it happening at all because I definitely did sit down to watch this pay-per-view and once the Owen Hart thing happened nothing else mattered I know I sat there and watched it, but I know I didn't absorb it. And it definitely wasn't worth absorbing when you see the match that we're talking about. And I'm sure for the wrestlers involved, it was very hard to perform that night. So it was probably a five-star stinker. And um, that night was, was fucking awful. Absolutely awful. 
He was scheduled to face the Godfather for the Intercontinental Championship as the Blue Blazer. He was supposed to descend from the rafters, and the release mechanism was activated too early. He fell nearly 78 feet. The man was only 34 years old. Despite the accident, the show went on to its conclusion, a decision debated by many to this very day. The death was acknowledged by Jim Ross on air to the viewers at home, but no news was ever given to the fans in attendance that Owen Hart was actually passed away. And I know that's a sad note to go out on, but that was the only reason why that that woman's match, well, that mixed tag match featuring those two women from this particular card was mentioned on this show. It was on a very historic date. It might not be a historic match, but it was a very important and historic day in pro wrestling history. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me tonight. This was a, a fun episode, a little bit of a different type of a theme style we had going on here. Hopefully more news drops like this and we can continue to do special episodes, special tea episodes just like this. Certainly... The ladies are kicking things up. They are definitely moving things into another gear. And deservedly so. Man. Absolutely fantastic to see the state of women's wrestling right now. We are going to have the May Young Classic. It's going to be something special. 17 countries. 32 women. One winner. Will she get a shot at Asuka's NXT Championship? Will she be moved right up to the main roster and be awarded with a number one contendership to the Raw or SmackDown Championships? Will she just win a silly looking trophy like the Cruiserweights and the, and the Tag Team Championships? Or will they give her a, some sort of a belt of her own and start a woman's show? Who the hell knows? We will find out. For sure. And we had... The Woman's Money in the Bank match. I was going to pull these graphics up before, but I was reading my script and I forgot to do the cool little picture things. So I'm doing them for you now as a thank you for sticking it through this long. And you could let me know that you stuck around this long by leaving a comment down below with the hashtag Woman's Revolution. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I am Nick Nightmare. This is Blue the Snowball Microphone. Have a good one, everybody. Prayers and thoughts with you guys in the UK. Manchester, you'll get through it, bro. Hearts and prayers are with you. Always. And now, we are out of here. Even these girls. Out of here. Now me. Out of here. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.